important spot here today. We're at the uh, Buddhist Church at Florin, and 76 years ago, this community was surrounded by 2,500 farmers, one of the largest Japanese American communities in the United States. And many of them gathered inside of that gymnasium there to hear the news that they and their families were going to be shipped off to some unknown destinations and be imprisoned. They had done nothing wrong, but they were being suspected of disloyalty, of being enemy agents, not being trustworthy. So this is very fitting that we're walking in those faithful footsteps of those people, a quarter of them who went to Manzanar, like we're going to be going to Manzanar over the next several days here. We're here to learn about that experience, and we're very lucky to have eight former World War II detainees in our group today. We have a lot of representation from many of the faith communities, Buddhist, the Jewish, Muslim, Christian communities, people very active, involved in uh, social justice issues. And then we're going to have some further um, sharing as we take our bus trip up to Lake Tahoe on our first leg of our trip here. I'm in heaven right now. Okay. I love it. And I don't want to leave it. <laughs> Good morning again, everyone. Uh, glad everyone made it. The plans for today, we're heading down to Manzanar National Park. We'll have a guided tour of the camp barracks, the uh, camp latrine building, and also the camp mess hall. One of the biggest challenges we face here is trying to get into people's head how crowded this square mile was. 10,000 people living in these lousy little barracks, eating in the mess halls, which you can enjoy this afternoon, going into the communal latrines, and pretty much running into everyone they never knew before, constantly, for however long they were here. Uh, a large family, so we had two rooms. And I remember it was not a divided area, so we had to go outside and come back to the next bear to visit my mother or father. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, tar paper, you know, outside, and uh, mm -hmm. the wood was uh, really some cheap kind of wood. One of the most colorful stories I remember my sisters telling me, because they were teenagers, is if you can imagine, just with a partition like that, uh, as most teenagers could or would or did. She came home late. So what do mothers do when you come home late? Ball you out. So everyone knew the next day that she was late. No privacy. Before the buildings were finished, we came in in Heart Mountain 
And so the roof up above was wide open, and so we children used to throw things into the next apartment. <laughs> <laughs> then something else kept rocketing back, like, I hate you. <laughs> Well, my grandmother would take me to the, the bathroom and she said, you have to be polite. Stick your elbow close to your body because if you go like this, you'll touch the person next to you and that's not polite. <laughs> so we also understood that if you went to the bathroom and you saw catalog books at the door, guess what? No toilet paper. Silent no more. Liberty and justice for all. At this time, I can't think of a theme that could be more powerful and more urgent and more relevant at this moment when the democracy and the human rights in this country are being threatened and when our obligation to shine a light on what can happen when any community is scapegoated and persecuted could not be more urgent. Good karaoke for you guys. Thank you. I hope that we all come back home with a sense of understanding that we must come together. And if one group of people are being oppressed, just stand up for them. That's that's how it is, how we create a nice unified community. And we try to put together a group of folks who can share the stories of their detainment, their family members, uh, young people, people from the Muslim community, those involved in social justice efforts, and uh, those who are sharing that kind of knowledge with the public. Because we want to see that awareness raise, we want to see the commitment grow, we want to see the leadership develop, because that's what's going to make the difference as far as the future goes. You know, if we can contribute to people, you know, standing up, speaking out, doing things, then prevent some of the mistakes of the past. So thank you. That's very important. Thank you. Yeah. There you go, Titus. I love it. <laughs> Every year it's tradition. I always have to get him flexing. And we're stopping off here just to kind of take a little bit of a break and get to know each other a little bit better and join the Mono Lake area. That was just fantastic. And uh, I, I think it's heard. also amazing too. Isn't amazing that amazing? Is a very good word to use. <laughs> one that I use quite often. And your name, your name, please. Mariel Tsukamoto. Hi, Hiroshi. Very nice to meet you. <laughs> Very nice to meet you. <laughs> Very nice okay. to meet you too. For the rest of this trip, yes. Since you're the first lady, can we call you Melania? <laughs> oh, Melania. Oh, Would dear. that be okay with you? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> okay. On back on the road, and we'll see y'all very soon. Okay. On with the next adventure with Hiroshi Hauser. <laughs> <laughs> Photo bomb. <laughs> Yeah, you guys practiced the last 10 years pretty good, cool, guys. Hey! Fuck it! 
It's a victory, it's a victory, it's a win! Look at this man! 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 Look at this man